that piece that you're talking about, I sold at Las Artistas for $500. So I was like, I felt accomplished that day. <laughs> I call myself a ceramic artist because I love to work with clay. I love to make pots, but I also love to work with sculpture too. However, I think I do lean more towards, towards pottery. I can make just about anything. I can make platters, dishes, saucers, cups. I love making bowls, I think, because one day I read a quote, and, and uh, forgive me because I can't remember who, who said it, but uh, they said that the bowl is the most democratic form, and, and I really believe that. I mean, the bowl can be used for anything. Chex mix, gotcha. Big bowl of pudding, gotcha. Mashed potatoes, it's yours. It's wonderful. I first got into ceramics uh, at the University of Texas El Paso, where originally I was pursuing a BFA in graphic design. Uh, but because I was pursuing a BFA, you have to take all of the disciplines. So I took sculpture, and painting, and drawing, graphic design. But then I got to ceramics and I touched clay and I said, this is life, I need, to, I need to do this. So eventually I changed my major from graphic design to ceramics. And uh, I excelled in ceramics. I loved working with clay and touching clay and making stuff. And I ended up uh, becoming the undergraduate TA for ceramics department at UTEP. I've always liked art but I never really considered art as a career. I never considered being a real artist until I went to the university and I fell under the wings of some really amazing professors at the university, Adrian Esparza, Angel Cabrales, Vincent Rourke. I came about this teaching position here at the El Paso Museum of Art because the museum school coordinator at the time, Kate Logue, had wrote an email to the art department chair, Vince Burke at the time, asking if there was anybody that he would recommend that would, might be interested in teaching a class here. I think they emailed him on a Tuesday morning. He told me about it. I emailed her back by Tuesday afternoon. By Wednesday, I had a uh, over the phone interview. By Thursday, I had an in-person interview that lasted two hours, and by Saturday, I was teaching a class. So I think they were pretty impressed with my knowledge. They were impressed that I was able to be that efficient, and so they hired me basically on the spot. I remember. I remember after two hours, I was. At, I asked them. I said, "So, do I get the job?" And they're, "Oh yeah, you're in. Don't worry about it." <laughs> what happens is the wet clay grabs the table, it sticks, and it pulls the clay. If you throw the clay straight down, it's gonna stick to the table. You have to go in an angle that it looks like this. I turn it over. Can you see how it's getting longer now? This has been one of my best work experiences ever. You know, they say, you hear things like, if you, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, and that's how I feel about this. What I tell my students when they first come into ceramics here at the El Paso Museum of Art, when they take the classes, my eight week class, the first day I teach them how to hand build. Hand build is the, or the three basic principles of hand building are pinch pots. You're making a pot started with just sticking your thumb in the clay and pinching the clay and forming it. Then we go to coil pots where you make a pot by rolling coils. And the, the third principle of hand building is slab building where you get a slab of clay dry it up a little bit, cut a form, and just build it up. You have to learn how to crawl before you walk. Sometimes, I've had students get upset with me. They're like, well, this is kind of baby stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah, kind of is, but you have to learn how to crawl before you walk. I usually recommend that you keep some of your first pieces. Yeah. So that in eight weeks, you'll see how far you've come. Oh, good. Yeah. So then the second week, we get into wheel throwing, so I give them a demonstration on the wheel. This is how you throw on the wheel. And now they're like, wait, 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 wait. Now you're going too fast. No, 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 no. This is how we do it. So I cone up. And what I'm doing is I'm using this part of my palm to cone up. But I'm not living there. I'm just squeezing and pulling up. 
Whatever happens, happens. Que sera, sera. Yeah. When I cone down, I am not pushing down. I'm gonna do this backwards so that you can see. All I'm gonna do is lay this clay against the center of my palm and I'm gonna lean it. Can you all see that? All I'm doing is leading it and the clay starts to move down. I'm not even pushing it down. And with the third week, I let them know, now you have all the tools you need to make whatever you want to make, go. There is a process to ceramics. So first, you're going to make whatever you're going to make out of wet clay. And I'll choose this clay body that I use here at the museum, for example. It's called Longhorn White. But the clay, when you first get it raw, it's gray. It's dark gray because it's wet. So we're gonna make whatever we make, then we're gonna put it aside, let it dry for a week. After the clay dries for a week, it becomes light gray. We call that bone dry, it becomes greenware. Once we have successful greenware, it doesn't crack, it's perfect, it's dry, it's good to go. Then it goes in the kiln one time. That's called a bisque fire. Once the clay gets fired the first time and it comes out, it becomes bisqueware, it's white. Now that it's white, we can glaze it, and so we put the glaze over it, set it out to dry for a day, then we put it back in the kiln for a second firing. That's called a glaze firing. And then you come up with a piece. If it's a bowl, for example, it comes out with a glassy sheen, and now it's ready. You know, wash it one time, it's ready for use. Food safe, microwave safe, dishwasher safe. But the discipline that you need is learning how to appreciate the process. You have to know it's gonna take at least a week and a half if you, if you constant, it's gonna take about a week and a half to go through the whole process of making something from beginning to end. The advice that I would give anybody who's barely started in ceramics is, is, first of all, don't be afraid. It's just mud, it's not gonna hurt you. The second advice that I would give to somebody who's barely started in ceramics is don't be too hard on yourself. That's a, a lot of my students, they're like, oh, I'm like, what are you talking about, that's great. But it fell, I know, that's wonderful. Now you know how far you can go. And the third piece of advice I would give somebody just starting ceramics is knowing when to stop at your skill level. So if you barely sit down and it's your first time making clay and you make something that's two inches tall and then it falls, that's great. Because you know that at least you can make something that's two inches tall. So practice that. And then you go a little bit further and you get a little bit further and then now you know you can go four inches tall before it falls, that's great. Because now you know you can at least go four inches tall before it falls. I've had seasoned potters that come into my class, the son of my class, and, and, they, and they get the wheel and right away they start. And the advice that I have for them, for a seasoned potter is don't be afraid. Don't be too hard on yourself. I know when to stop at your skill level. Because it's the same thing, it's just that the difference between a, a beginner potter and a seasoned potter, the only difference, it's been my experience to witness, my benefit to witness, is that the beginner potter can only make something this big. And the advanced potter can make something this big. But they still have the same insecurities. What if it falls? What if I look bad? I'm beating myself because I should know better. It, it, it's all the same. Why do people come and take my class? I have some people that come because it's genuine therapy for them. I have two combat veterans that come in and, and they pair up and it, they, they, it's good therapy, they say, and they come in here and they love it. I have some mother-daughter teams that come in because they're trying to um, bond and it's wonderful to see them come together. I have couples that come in here. One of my favorite stories is I had this married couple that came in and she wanted to take the pottery class. He was just mad the whole time. And they both struggled. Back then, my class was only six weeks long. Four weeks had passed and the man couldn't do anything. He was mad. I can't do this. And I tell him, well, you've made up your mind then, haven't you? Grumble, grumble, grumble. And then so he's like, ah, rah, rah. On week four, it was as if somebody turned on the switch and he was like, vert, he was making bowls, vert. And his wife got mad because he was making better bowls than she was. And he's just like, she's all mad. And he's like, check out my bowl, babe. Shut up. They're great. 
I love to mingle with my students and, and joke with them and make them feel comfortable. When they feel comfortable, I feel comfortable. And we're all good. And we make, we jam out. It's a lot of fun. What they pay for the class when they come here, I give them everything they need. I tell them all you need to do is come with a good attitude. I do my best to give my students more than just instruction in ceramics, but encouragement in their daily lives. Because for myself, ceramics helped me to heal as a combat veteran that suffers from combat-related post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it's very therapeutic. And almost everybody will tell you the same thing. This is very relaxing. This is very therapeutic. And then I say, I know. <laughs> Coil building is how the ancient Egyptians used to make pots. Yeah. So they can make it as big, tall, mm -hmm. as they want. So in Korea, they make these gigantic pots. They're huge. But their coils are about that thick. Oh my God. And they, they go one layer at a time, and they have this whole, I mean, you, you're using their fingertips, but they use this whole method where they get in there, they're holding the clay here, and they're squishing the clay, they're coiling it. God, that's incredible. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? Once. It was horrible. <laughs> I'll try it again someday. We'll see how it goes. My latest commission has been with Desert Modern Florals over Valentine's Day, February, middle for February the 14th, and uh, I made 50 vases for them. Uh, that was great, though, because I said, we need 50 vases. We want them about this big. Go. Color, this big. Go. I was like, great. So I made them, I whipped them up. I made 50 vases, and... Uh, got them made, got them dried, got them fired, got them glazed, delivered them. The day before Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day, they all went out. Uh, I walked over there one day to go check up and I saw they had people delivering locally downtown. I could see my vases walking all over the street. like, this is wonderful. And uh, it's a really good feeling, you know, when you get to put your stuff out there. And, and they got calls the next day talking about how, you know, they love the vases and they plan to keep the vases. and. It's great knowing that your work's out there. You know, originally, when I first started selling my work at Las Artistas, uh, people would come and buy my cups and my bowls, and I have a little stamp that I put on it indicating that it's my work. And I remember people saying, uh, I'm gonna buy this cup for my fiance, my mother, my brother. This cup's going to Florida, this cup's going to Minnesota. I'm like, wow, it's a neat feeling knowing that your work is getting dispersed over the nation. You know? Nothing bothers me more than knowing that someone's gonna buy a cup and then they're gonna put it on a shelf because they're not gonna use it. Oh, that's not what it's for. You're supposed to use it. I love the idea of people using my bowls and my cups and they're gonna drink out of it or eat out of it and they're gonna wash it and it's gonna be in someone's cabinet until somebody grabs it again. It's wonderful, it's a great feeling. A lot of times you'll hear Potter say you need to begin with the end in mind. You need to know what you're gonna make, how big you're gonna make it, how you're gonna glaze it when you get to that point so that you know what you're doing because, and what that means is, if I wanna make a bowl for a dinner party to make salad, right? Like a salad bowl, if you will. <clears throat> I know that I need to use X amount of clay because I want the bowl to be so big. And I want, if it's gonna be a bowl for salad, I want it to be kinda of lighter because people are gonna pass it around. So I wanna make sure that the clay is a little bit lighter so I can make my walls thinner. So it's a bigger bowl but has not too much weight. I need to consider the glaze, how I want it to look. I need to consider the glaze so that on the side of the bowl, do I need to put ridges? Is it gonna be smooth? And so I need to consider all of those things when I'm, when I'm making. However, sometimes I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna make a salad bowl, it's gonna be this big, and I want it to have ridges because of the glaze and X, Y, Z and this and that, and then I end up with a vase. But that's just how it goes sometimes. But that's great, because it makes, it keeps me going. Okay, this ended up a vase, now that was practice. Let me come back and I'm gonna make a bowl now. And that's just how it goes sometimes. On any given day when I have class, there's always music playing and people are working, and I love it. Because you come in here and you see people on all the tables and the wheels, and some people are throwing, and some people are hand building, and some people are carving, some people are glazing, some people are just having a good old time, they're having a taco, it's wonderful. We're listening to music, we're jamming, we're talking. It's a very creative space in here, and I'm very proud of myself for that. You know, creating this energy in this space where people are comfortable and they can talk and they can just go, and it's nice. 
you should come in one day and, and just check it out because it's it's really something to see.